Graham Pohl, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you, Stephen. Strikes me that when you left top flight, top flight refereeing, you had become jaded and cynical. Is that fair? Um, I think disillusioned would be um, would probably more accurate a more accurate feeling. Um, it's difficult to, to to be on top of your game ongoing. I mean, a lot of people talk about, oh, we need to make referees get there young um, to give them a chance to dominate and become world. Uh, players as opposed to just domestic players that you know people don't realize there's a there's a real pecking order in refereeing and and I made the the international list at 31 uh, the, the top elite group at 33 and and, and I did 10 years in that uh, 11 years in that and, and and that's difficult to maintain the standard that you're doing you think about a player who reaches the pinnacle of his career how many years does he actually perform at that very top level and I think I'd, I'd done my time but I used those words advisedly, jaded and cynical, because uh -huh. you describe how toward the end of your career, you had begun to think that there was no point in certain decisions being taken because mm -hmm. you wouldn't be backed by the footballing authorities. Mm -hmm. You'd lost confidence in the system. Yes, I had. Um, and, and it wasn't just me. You know, we had the discussions around, around the referees at our training camps and get-togethers, and, and issues such as managers their behaviour within the technical area, how they got away with what they called the, the circus that surrounds football, we disagreed with. But when, when a manager gets reported three times within a six-month period and the, the, the total of his fines is £3,000, you wonder why bother reporting him. If that's all he's going to get, which effectively for him, he might just go, well, do you want cash? It, it, it's not effective. So why do you think the football authorities, the FA, were not backing you? That's, that's a real difficult question to answer. I mean, I asked. I mean, uh, obviously, obviously when, I, when I left, I was quite outspoken about I was disappointed and disillusioned with that, that lack of support. Um, the, the situation, they came back and said, well, you should have told us. And I said, well, I did. In November, when I had the big John Terry case, I did say to you I was disappointed. I did feel you left me hanging to dry. I did feel you left my integrity in question. And that is the key thing for a referee. Who did you tell that to? The very top people I at the FA, to Brian, Brian Barwick? I, I spoke to Brian Barwick himself. I spoke to Graham Noakes, who's the company secretary. And I spoke to the people in charge of the um, compliance unit. And the what FA. did they say to you? Oh, be patient, Graham. These things take time. There's a process we have to go through. We, we have to investigate all things. We're not just representing referees. We represent players. So, you know, if a player's made an accusation against a referee, we don't just investigate the player, we investigate all parties. But within two or three days, they had categoric assurances from my two assistants and my fourth official that what I'd been accused of saying I hadn't said, because we were all mic'd up, they heard every word I said during that match, and we had video evidence to prove that what John Terry said I'd said to him on the field couldn't possibly have happened because there were no words exchanged between us. Well, so I want to talk about the Terry incident particularly mm -hmm. uh, in some detail in a moment because okay. he's the England captain, it does okay. matter. But before we get to that, I just want to continue with this general theme mm -hmm. that you quit the business, you quit the game, mm -hmm. thinking that the FA was not backing referees. Is it because they were in the end, too heavily influenced by the power of players and managers? I don't know. It, it, it's, it's something, you know, without getting inside the FA and, and understanding, I mean, the, the various committees that they work, work within, it, it's difficult to know. Um, I always had the feeling that I wasn't an FA-type man. But well, this isn't just about you, it's about referees. It's, it's, it's about the authority of referees. But, but, but what you've got in the end was it, it almost became a battle between the, the country's lead referee... And, and the country's lead player, if that's what the England captain is. And that, that's something we could discuss. And I felt that, in the end, OK, they said, oh, well, we found him guilty, or he, he ended up pleading guilty, and they fined him £10,000. Now, £10,000 to me is a huge amount of money. £10,000 to John Terry is a morning's wages. Uh, that's not really teaching him a lesson, in my view. And, uh, and until and unless the authorities come down heavier and are more appropriate with players and managers, they're not going to improve their behaviour. Well, I want to pick up that point too later on, but just sticking with what you said about oh, a decade and a half at mm -hmm. the top of the game in the Premier League, international refereeing as well, you've talked about the pressure, yep. about how it takes its toll on you. Is the pressure much greater today than it was when you started out in the professional oh, oh, game? Without a doubt. I mean, you, you, you almost can't compare the two things. It's almost impossible. Over just 14 years, you can't compare how it was to how it is. And if you had to define as briefly as you can why the pressure is so much greater, what is that definition? <laughs> that, 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 I would take that away from the FA and say that's, that's media scrutiny. That, that's more than, more than anything else. It's media scrutiny in that it used to be six cameras a, 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 a game. It used to be that um, a referee could be called incompetent. 
but he, he was never questioned his integrity. Now it's a personal attack. It's, it's, you know, a referee takes great delight in sending a player off. It's about how he wants to be sent to stage. It's, it's a personal attack, and also there's undermining the integrity. You only gave a penalty because it's a big team. And there becomes, there's become this real fascination with big team, little team, that maybe was always there, but was never to the fore, and a referee's integrity was never questioned. Now, maybe that's because in other countries, virtually, you know, almost every other country in Europe, when you, when you look, there's been Italy, Germany, Portugal, Greece, Poland, there's been problems with corruption in refereeing. Maybe that's starting to, because we've got lots of um, international players coming across, maybe people are thinking that that happens here. And is it because it's moved on to the issue of basic referees' integrity rather than just incompetence and mm -hmm. making rubbish decisions? Yep. Is that the reason why, and then just to quote Urs Meyer, who mm -hmm. a colleague of yours, top yep. international referee, yep. who's always now connected with the Euro 2004 yes. game, Portugal-England, when he disallowed an English goal, which English fans thought he should have given, allowed, uh -huh. he has now said that he believes because of the sorts of accusations levelled at referees about their integrity mm -hmm. that a referee will be killed within the next five years. It's, it's, it's an interesting, I mean, I, I wouldn't go as far as that. I hope, certainly hope they aren't. I mean, uh, it, Well, obviously we all hope they won't it, be, but uh, have you ever felt threatened? I've felt threatened. I've been threatened. You know, I've, I've received death threats. I've received dreadful things in the post. Death I've threats? Received, yeah. Death I've threats been, from whom? I received death threats from, from fans after a particular game went against them. And that was, I mean, that's, I've, I've put that in the book I've, I've just, just released, as you know. Um, and that, that's something which you look at and think, you know, they went to the trouble of going abroad to post that to me. It wasn't posted in North London, it was posted in Spain. So it was kind of, you're not going to trace us and here we are. You know, on the phone, regularly, I'm going to have to change my mobile number a number of times because people get your number and threaten you. Or they'll phone your home when you're out and they know you're out because you're doing a game on television and, and say to your wife what they're going to do to you. What on earth does that do to your family? It, uh, it makes it very difficult for them. I mean, one thing you have to assure them is the people that do these things, if someone wants to hurt someone, they hurt them. That's, that's always my view on it. If they don't, if they want to scare them, then they threaten them. And that's the only way you can deal with that, that type of thing. It's not pleasant, and that's part of the life of a referee. So let's bring it back.